Nashville's independent radio, Lightning 100. All right, just about noontime here in Nashville, Tennessee. It is Lieutenant Dan about to kick off a special Cheryl Crow edition of the Request Lunch. Thanks to our good friends at Edley's Barbecue. It is another beautiful day, 70 degrees. <laughs> On April 12th, you could be having lunch at Edley's in 12 South East Nashville or Sylvan Park. Uh, Cheryl Crow, not only in studio, but bringing along Jeff Trott. Who Yay, are- Jeffrey hey. Trott! Hello. Co-wrote. We're having lunch together. co produced the new record, Be Myself. It's going to be out uh, a week from Friday. It is. Feeling good? You excited oh my about gosh. it? Oh, yeah. We're excited to be here because we, uh, we Shazam you like crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited. I, I have to say, I can't think of anything I'd rather do than sit around and play music with Jeff Trott. And that's the God's honest truth, Death. You know what? I mean it. If I'm true. I like, yeah. If I'm being honest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Any I, old time. I can't really. think of anything better I do than have Cheryl Crow and Jeff Trott on my show. So it's a it's mutual admiration here. We love us. <laughs> yeah. we, Pat on the back. We've been uh, uh, we've been playing halfway there from the new I, record. I know. Thank you for doing that. And uh, it it features uh, Gary Clark Jr. on on that track. Yes. How, how did Gary Clark Jr. end up on there? Well, um, I texted him in the wonders of the wonders of uh, technology. I texted him and said, and asked. Did you tweet at him? Say, hey, you want to be know, on my record? I actually know him. Um, I mean, I don't want to drop names, but Gary Clark Jr. is a very good friend of mine. So, um, I've known him since I was working on the um, 100 Miles from Memphis record. Young kid, just getting a little bit of notoriety. And he came and played with us. And lo and behold, he wound up being managed by my manager, Scooter Weintraub. And I've just followed him for ages. He's a great... I want to say kid, but I guess that sounds a little, um, well, it makes me sound really old, <laughs> but, uh, but he is. I, I look, I mean, I tell him this all the time. I'm like, you're the great hope because he's so talented. He's such an artist and he's that, that word I overuse sometimes, but he's very authentic. And um, so I sent him the song and said, what do you think? And he sent back all these, all these ideas. So and many. Jeff and I were like, no, <laughs> what do we do? We want to use all of it. Yeah. It's. Edit City, you know, but it's sort of like, but the one thing, he did one pass, you know, all the way through without any editing that was just like absolutely perfect and had the spirit of our record. Yeah, he's you know, he's so. special, man. If y'all don't know him, go and get his record. Yeah, I, m- I remember going out uh, and seeing him at Bonnaroo and just yeah. getting in front of that stage, which uh, I'm a big fan of, like, actually being as close as you can to an artist performing. I feel like that puts you surrounded by all the other people that put the effort to get that close. I know. And just the energy there that you're getting from the stage and the people around you. And, and uh, yeah, I'm a fan for life. I love this. that. Yeah, we played uh, Troubadour recently. I mean, yeah, Troubadour recently, and we hadn't played there in a long time. And just having people right there being so, like, present. No, they weren't. They didn't have their cell phones out or anything, and they were just there. And I was like, wow, this is, like... This is an experience, which I hope young kids will get, you know, that they'll actually go and be together and not be. Experiencing music together instead of, like, insular, like, just by yourself. I mean, yeah. by yourself's cool, too, you know? You're walking around in a forest and you're listening to, you know, whoever. The new Cheryl Crow record? The new Cheryl Crow <laughs> record, yeah. Be myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which comes out next Friday. <laughs> or, or, or maybe. Brought to you by Edley's Barbecue. <laughs> maybe, you know. <laughs> Maybe you're roller skating. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's right. Exactly. You put your skating. phone away and you roller skate. All right. Well, Cheryl Crow is here in studio. And uh, are you going to start with Halfway There? We're going to start with Halfway There. Yeah. Um, I'll just tell you real quick. Um, Jeff and I wrote a bunch of tunes last August. And obviously it was a uh, really heated time with all the um, election stuff going on. And, um, and man, we just, we just barfed it all out. I mean, it was just like there were so many things to write about. And it was a great fun time for us and this is one of the songs that came out of it and it just kind of addresses how ugly people um kind of got with each other and their inability to have a conversation without it being you know yeah we're kind of celebrating people's differences as well yeah. i mean now it's kind of a twofold thing you know but it's uh but we had a lot of uh material to choose from with all the stuff going on so anyways we like you said spewed it out yes yeah, fun time know? fun time to be an artist hairball Cheryl okay. Crow live on lightning 100 one, two, one, two, three. Well, you pull up in your Hummer and you park next to my Volt. Wearing a money three piece, I wear Levi's full of holes. Well, you walk along the left side and I walk along the right. We're both trying to reach the same. 
Cause if God is love and love is godly Why do we argue? I don't know why I wanna try If we can't listen to each other Before we criticize it, yeah Maybe if you care, if you really care Baby, if you dare, won't you meet me halfway there? Lightning 100 live here in the 1 RPM studio. That is Cheryl Crow. Got Jeffrey Trot with her. He co wrote and co produced the album Be Myself. It's going to be in studios next Friday, a week from this Friday. And uh, that's the song Halfway There. You've been hearing here on Lightning 100. So I did get to, uh, they sent me over a preview copy of the new record, which is why I was able to properly reference your song Roller Skate. Yes. As, uh, as Nicely executed, as, I must as say. Big I, one. Uh, I like the message in it. Put your phone away. Let's roller skate. That's oh, a lot man. of fun. I actually saw some video footage. You're actually practicing doing some roller skating backstage, and that and then it all made a little more sense to me. I'm, I'm, I'm now integrating um, the bass into the roller skating routine so that I might play and roller skate at the same time. No way. And chew gum. What? And also, could I add something to that, yeah, too? Yeah. My wife plays on the Nash, Nashville uh, Brawl Stars, which is the local roller derby team. Okay. So yes, the Quinstonator. Quinsta- Wait, the Quinstonator. That's right. All right. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I, I love the, the Nashville Roller Girls, man. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they're, uh, they're awesome chicks. Well, that's very cool. All right. Well, uh, uh, yeah, Cheryl Crow is here, and uh, we're going to be getting her new record. The title track to it, Be Myself. Uh, I, I feel like that song really stood out to me. It's just a, a great sounding song. And then I like the message in it. Just be myself. Uh, you, you can talk about how it's a hard work hanging with hipsters uh, in, in, in that song. <laughs> yes. I took an Uber to a juice bar to see a new an- indie band play. They have 99 yes. followers in only one day. I, I was I was I was waiting for you to be like that as it all. I heard him. I shazammed him on Lightning 100. So that's, <laughs> that's right. That's how. That's right. That's how I knew yeah, about it. Yeah, you know, him. we 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 I, Jeff and I we we would sit around and talk about stuff, and then later on that day, um, it would have appeared in a song, and that was one of them. You know, I just was thinking. Um, and it kind of ties in the roller skate thing too. My mom, if she ever talked on the phone, she was attached to the wall. So moms didn't stand around and talk on the phone very much. So when my kids ever say, "Mom, put your phone away," ugh, I mean that's like the <laughs> worst <laughs> feeling, you know. <laughs> so so I pretty much am like incommunicado during you know after school hours, and it pisses people off. But um, I just want to make sure I'm present. And and I know Jeff feels the same. But the be myself thing we were talking about because you got a teenager. How hard it must be to like hormones. That, but also like hormones, likes, Kimbo or whatever likes they and say. dislikes and ugly texting and how much harder it must be with just having social media. Um, it it was hard enough being a teenager without the pressures of you know having a cell phone and stuff. So that's kind of what be myself was about. Yeah. About hopefully being yourself isn't a consolation prize. Well, it's uh, de- definitely a, a great song on, on the new record. I, I also tell you, another one that stuck out to me that I really loved was Rest of Me. I just, oh. I, just, yeah. I, just, yeah. I thought that was just Ooh, a ah. really, really great sounding song. So. Thank you. So you were kind of channeling the uh, you know Revolver or something like that on that, or yeah. I don't know, like kind of Beatlesque kind of thing. We we have been Jeff and I've been working together for twenty well, years. Forever. since we were four, <laughs> and um, we tend to um, just love a lot of different kinds of music. And depending on the day, we pull from what I feel like are some pretty awesome references. And the Beatles is definitely one of them. And I mean, we even were inspired by Prince's death, and there's a little bit of that on. Yeah, I don't want to grow up and. So uh, we're just sponges. We love music. Yeah, Beatles and Stones for me. You know, yeah, like, and it's Stones. like the Bible almost. You know, you got a little swagger and some. Mm-hmm. You know, but there's so much great music out. And then, and then can we, we don't sit around and listen to you know old, just old music. I like to listen to a lot of new stuff, mm-hmm. like the new 
Michael Kiwanuka. I, I had I had the Jayhawks in here yesterday. You and, did. And we were talking about uh, their love of the Kinks, and they were like, when people oh, say yeah. you love the Beatles or the Stones, they're like, we say the Kinks. The, the Kinks, <laughs> yeah. The punk brother band. That's kind right. Of thing. The cousins. The distant the cousins. cousins of the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. Well, if, if depending on how much time you have after uh, we do this live session, we'll let you uh, pick out some songs. We'll play some oh, songs on the radio. Do that. Yeah. Love it, love let Lightning it. 100 be uh, your jukebox, Cheryl Crow. All right, uh, so which song are you going to do well, now? we're going to play a song that is, um, uh, what was it inspired by? I can't remember. Um, well, you know what? Uh, we, we have been together for a long time. We've been through a lot of each other's lives. We have ki- kids. Jeff's been around through all my relationships with everything. And this song is really about um, just having been around the world and been through life and come out the other side, realizing that sometimes taking the long way around is where you learn all the good stuff. So it's called Long Way Back Home. Do Three, four. I got an up close glimpse of the outside world. It's an awful big place, well, that's for damn sure. I see more of this life than most have seen And it's taken a mighty big toll on me Sure felt good to be free Some days I feel alright Some days I can't wait until it's night Sometimes you gotta face the light Get back in the ring Put on your gloves and fight I think it's gonna take some time to find Take the long way back home I'm gonna take the long way back home Back home Did you ever see a man have a heart attack? It'll open your eyes and put you in your trap Cigarette, get it right this time. I clean up my act. Oh, that's a cold hard fact. Some days I feel alright, some days I can't wait until it's night. Sometimes I gotta face the light, get back in the ring, put on your gloves and fight. I think it's gonna take some time to find a way to ease my mind. I'm gonna take the long way back home I'm gonna take the long way back home Back home Lightning 100 That is another one from the new Cheryl Crow record Coming out a week from Friday be myself, Cheryl Crow, here in her hometown Nashville radio station studio, uh, bringing along Jeff Trot with her today. Who uh, they're both uh, playing guitar on that one. Cheryl's playing the bass on the first song, and they co-wrote and co-produced the new record, which is about to be out. Uh, doing a lot of uh, press on uh, this new album uh, last night. Uh, you got to be interviewed by Dan, Dan Rather. Rather. Can you believe that? I know. I realize you know. You, you must like being interviewed by Dan. That's, that's yes, what, that's what this I do. Is, right? Oh, and this one, uh, Lieutenant Dan, <laughs> this one far exceeds. I mean, Dan Rather doesn't really know what he's doing. I mean, he's really only been doing it for a few days. A couple days, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, that was cool. I mean, that's such an honor. That guy's been, you know, I grew up with him reporting the Vietnam War and everything else. So he's. Wow. Yeah, he's he's the goods, man. Uh, some of the things you talked about, I had forgotten about. I mean, you're a terrific singer, and you have a history. Before people knew you as Cheryl Crow, you were singing in other people's bands. And she says, "I am the one." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get it up, my son. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that, I yeah, lo- I was Michael Jackson's backup singer, which is completely fascinating to my children. Because they don't, you know, they don't um, really oh know who he was. And, and to everyone. And to everyone. <laughs> I know the hair is actually what is so really um, 
mind blowing. Well, you have wait. to go on YouTube and see my hair. It was massive. <laughs> oh, we got to see Sheryl Crow's hair. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, even to to my kids, when he passed away, mm-hmm. it it became this this moment where they discovered his music and like yeah. he kind of repopulated himself into our culture. It's like because yeah. when you dig into those songs, they're just some of the best songs. Of yeah, all time. and there's the this kid, uh, the Weekend, who sure. has several songs out, and he is uncannily. I mean, he sounds so much like Michael that it's in in some weird way for me a little disturbing. But um, and I was saying that to my nine year old, and he's like, ah, you know, he doesn't really know what Michael sounds like. But yeah, so they're uh, they you know they they get snippets. Uh, yeah, I, f- I feel like uh, Bruno Mars is is kind of in that carrying that yeah, same he, torch yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you talked about some some heavy things and. Uh, like uh, the challenges women face in the music industry mm. with him. Um, I, do you want to talk about that at all? Well, I have to be honest with you. Um, we did the interview a while back, and then I had a bunch of people last night texting me saying they'd seen it. And I don't typically watch those things, and I hope I didn't offend anybody. But I know that the the conversation has come up about women in the music business, and you know, I do have my own view about it. Um, uh, this idea that um, women and branding, I mean, branding across the board, I think, is detrimental to your art if you really want to be an artist. If you want to be an entertainer, I think it's probably the most fantastic thing that ever happened. Um, uh, but if you want to be an artist, I mean, what you want to to sell, um, and I don't mean monetarily, but what you want people to dig into are your words and the emotions of melody and instrumentation and all that stuff and i think there's a lot of power in that i think there's more power in being able to stand up and deliver a powerful song like yesterday all my troubles seem so far away i mean that kills you yeah um you know and if that doesn't move you if it takes a dance routine okay that's fine you're you need something else and that's cool too but you know the discussion about women and power i feel like we need to embrace the power of who we are um, as opposed to selling the sexual part of ourselves in order to I don't know to sell something else and I, I just you know I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with it right now because I have little boys and everything's boobs and butts and you know it's all that <laughs> and uh, I want them to know that beauty um, is not the shape of your body you know it's the shape of your heart um, and your words and that kind of thing so you know it's just it's a confusing time I think for young girls when they see these images um, of their 18, 19 year old pop stars, it's it, just confusing. You, you, know? you kind of have a song that talks about that, the last song on your album. Yeah, the woo woo song. My oh, kids yeah. call it the butt song. Because <laughs> one of the lines in it, you know, the word butt for a six year old is like the best thing that ever happened. That and poop. Um, <laughs> but um, they, yeah, they heard, I played them that song when we first wrote it. And I was a little bit worried, but it talks about, you know, um, little girls on the playground, um, you know, dressing provocative. And um, one of the lines is every time I check my Twitter, somebody's butt is in my face. Because it just seemed like for a long time there, you know, all these celebrities were like posting pictures of their butts, you know. And I'm like, wow, okay, so, uh, hmm. I don't think we ever grow up, really. We don't you know ever I mean? really grow it's up. Like, That's true. Like, I know. It's like endless. Yeah. Well, one, one other thing you spoke to him about, which, uh, which I think is awesome, is your triumphant fight against breast cancer yes and you know um um i have had the opportunity to talk about it a lot um but i will say uh, there's a knee jerk for me that you know i'm I'm around people all the time that are struggling like really struggling to win the fight against cancer and i was so lucky because mine was discovered at such an early stage um that i call myself a survivor i am i've you know i've survived cancer but um, the people out there in the army of those who are really struggling, um, they are still out there. And it's been since Nixon, the war on, you know, trying to find a cure on can- cure for cancer. It's just mind blowing that we don't have one yet. So I, I do have the opportunity to talk to women about being diligent about getting their mammograms and that kind of thing. Because until we have a cure, you know, it's prevention's our our best hope, our best our best weapon for sure. We have Cheryl Crow live here in the 1 RPM studio. Her new album, Be Myself, is coming out next Be Friday. Uh, w- you guys are going to do maybe a, a throwback song right now. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. This, this, this child is over 20 years old. That's right. 
Yes. We recorded this in, in New Orleans, actually, and uh, I'll tell you a quick story. When we you say were, we, you mean Jeff Trott, Jeff who Trott you have with you today. Uh, yes. I was a passenger. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> and he was. He, actually, he was just starting with the Wallflowers, and I called him. They were just getting ready to leave, and I was like, Jeff. That is the true story. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Will you come and write with me and work with me on my record? And uh, bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, it was yeah. A, it was a trip. And, you know, I was re- rehearsing with the Wallflowers and all this stuff. I mean, Cheryl and I had been doing some writing before that. Then I didn't hear from her for I don't know a month or two, and so I thought, oh, okay, I guess I kind of blew that gig. And then uh, then I got asked to to play with the Wallflowers, and I rehearsed for about three weeks. All even got the press photos and everything. You, you know, did? got all dolled up and every. Uh, there's probably a. <laughs> A picture of me Sorry, with the dude. wallflowers all. And then I get this phone call from Cheryl. It's like, well, hey, you know, can you come out to New Orleans? And and it was something like, I can't remember there exactly been, There the would have been more chicks on the wallflowers gig, I'm sure. I'm, our, my gig was like super like, you know, somber compared to like, oh, well. Wah, wah, bah, well, bah, I mean, bah, she put it bing. this way to me. She says, well, you know, would you rather... You know, play you know somebody else's songs or or you know our stuff. You know, and I thought because I'm a me. businesswoman. You got me. <laughs> That's right. You had me at hello. You had me at publishing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been long, a long way from here. Poncho played for mosquitoes, drank till I was thirsty again. I went searching through a thrift store jungles, found Geronimo's rifle, Maryland shampoo, Benny Goodman's corset and pen. Well, okay. I made this up I promised you I'd never give up If it makes you happy It can't be that bad If it makes you happy Why the hell are you so sad? Train, dear young train, who hasn't been there before? I come around, around a hard way. Bring your comics in bed, scrape the mold off the bread, and serve you French toast again. Oh, okay. I still get stoned I'm not the kind of girl you take on If it makes you happy It can't be that bad If it makes you happy Why the hell are you so sad? Far, far away from here We put on a poncho Played for mosquitoes Everywhere in between Well, okay, we get along 
So what if right now everything's wrong? If it makes you happy It can't be that bad If it makes you happy Why the hell are you so sad? Lightning 100, Cheryl Crow live in the 1 RPM studio, making us happy here in Nashville, <laughs> Tennessee. So glad uh, Jeff Trot could come with you today. Me too. Into the studio. Me uh, three. My music husband. <laughs> yeah. If uh, if there's if there's some time, Cheryl, I'd love to let you guys uh, take over the radio station for a little bit here. This is Cheryl Crow, and I'm here with Jeff Trot. That's my radio voice, everybody. <laughs> Um, yeah, I will tell you, I'm a giant Shazammer. Jeff, are you a Shazammer? I don't even know what that is. Well, I mean, you know, it I just... could be misconstrued as something naughty or is part of a, a gadget a on your phone. Um, yeah, I, we've been, actually, we make playlists all the time. Uh, my tour manager and I do, and it's fun. It's fun, and it's good, clean, healthy entertainment. All right, well. Um, we we're got... into uh, Michael. Michael Kiwanuka. Kiwanuka. All yeah, right. So let's play um, anything by him. All anything right. by him. We, we got to do a quick break. Okay. We're going to come back. Okay. And we are going to have some fun with Cheryl Crow and Jeff Trott here in the 1 RPM studio on Lightning 100, thanks to Ed Lee's Barbecue. All right, we are 33 minutes here into the noon hour. Cheryl Crow's still here. Jeffrey Trott's still here. Can't and, uh, get rid of him. Ooh, yeah, that's right. right. I'm st- <laughs> Show brought to you by our good friends at Ed Lee's Barbecue. Grateful to their sponsorship. Uh, the new record, Be Myself, is going to come out next Friday, not this Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, and folks can also pre order the vinyl over at CherylCrow.com, which is going to come out June 2nd. Uh, yeah, vinyl, you, man. I know. Well, it's, it's funny. Like, vinyl has come back it, it went away and came back and i well, there's actually this website and i was looking at lightning100.com back in 1996 which is a year before i came to town and it was just kind of fun looking at it and i was reading about uh, our program director at the time had just been hired and she, there was this little q a and she would interviewed and they asked her in there do you still have your vinyl records did you get rid of them yet and she was oh so, someone's calling cheryl or she's just playing a song it's okay that's right, it's live radio. Okay, anyway, yes. Uh, so anyhow, they, they asked her, though, do you still have your vinyl? Yeah. And I, I realized that was like a thing, like people got rid of their vinyl. I know. And and so did did you guys get rid of your vinyl? Do you still have these no. old vinyl collections? No, it's all about it now. I'm glad that a lot of... Do you still have of, yours? I, have, I don't have everything because I, you know... My past, I broke up with somebody who ended up like keeping all of my records. So, uh, oh, that's, uh, yeah, that yeah. is not yeah. right. That was a tough yeah. one. All of my Phew. like old punk records. Oh. And, oh. I, but, you know, what's but, her address? I'm going to go kick her. Well, <laughs> Joe Crow. Uh, that's yeah, right. I know. That's right. On Spreading your side. Spreading peace and love. <laughs> I'm going to go kick her. Give me the records. Um, yeah, no, I actually, um, for my, when was it Christmas, two, two Christmases ago, my band got me a turntable. Nice. And they, um, what do you call it? Um, procure, no, when you have an art curated, they curated yes. my record collection. Oh, that's so cool. I used to have 1,500 records, records, and in a, uh, they were in a storage unit, and they were just warped all to pieces, because back then you didn't have climatized. But, um, so they curated it, and they each gave me three albums and I got to after they presented me with, with their albums I got to see the string of text between all of them and it was like coming to blows like 
my drummer, Fred Eltringham. Hello, Fred. You're the best drummer in all of Nashville, but nobody, he's actually not, you guys. He's yeah. actually not. Don't you, hire you him. Want to <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's like, Nashville's so awesome. No, I'm to give you don't props, but. Yeah. but he was going to give me a Boston record. I'm sorry. I love Boston. They made unbelievable records. Yeah. And my manager is like, you are not giving her a Boston. And it was like a big, like, ugly debate through text. I was like, I love it. That's the best present ever. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, albums are, they're sacred. But you do listen to Lightning 100, and... Yes, we do. You're a fan of the band Joseph. I love, I found Joseph, as I found so many bands that I love and artists um, on Lightning 100. So I want you to play um, either uh, White Flag or SOS, I don't care which one, but um, I think White Flag was the first one I sh- Shazam. so maybe, Let's do it. maybe hit us with that. All right, this is Joseph on Lightning 100. Going to do our Lightning Flashes concert calendar right now before we wrap up with Cheryl Crow. Tonight at 3rd and Lindsley, Plowboy Records is having their fifth anniversary show featuring Blackfoot, Gypsies, Sylvan, Sylvan, the Kentucky Headhunters, Bobby Bear, a tribute to Jim Ed Brown, Bud Kaysen, Paul Birch, and Eric Heatherly. If uh, you want to go to that, it's going to get underway at 8 o'clock. Coming up at Soul Shine Pizza in Midtown, it's our Friday afternoon live broadcast. Hang from Adam from the Morning Show. He'll be testing your trivia skills and giving you a chance to win tickets to Forecastle Fest in Louisville, Kentucky. Also, Caroline Spence, our local artist of the week, will give us a free all-ages acoustic set at Soul Shine Pizza. Little Harpeth Brewery, that's going to be the record release party for Blackfoot Gypsies 21 and Over Show and they're going to be swinging by the studio this afternoon, getting here around 2 o'clock. Uh, Cheryl Crow is still here. Jeff Trod and Cheryl Crow hanging out in the studio this afternoon. Thank you so much for being here. So much fun. fun. I, yeah. I tell you, I'm going to be keeping my eyes peeled for a Nashville date. I'm ready for a, a Nashville Cheryl Crow date. You so. very well may be hearing about one All right. soon, uh, Lieutenant Dan. I, as, soon as, I, as soon as I hear about it, I'm going to tell everyone about it. So we do know about a, a Florida date that uh, Cheryl Crow is going to be a part of, and we are giving away tickets to it. It's our cornhole tournament happening tonight. Uh, you can join us. It's, it's actually called Beach, please, because uh, we're going to send someone to the beach. I know. Oh that's gosh. Beach, please. Yeah, that's sillier than cornhole. Um, but uh, it is going to be a good hang tonight, 6 to 9 p.m. at Fat Bottom at uh, 6 to 9 p.m. at Fat Bottom, 844th Avenue North. Uh, so you were a part of uh, this Merle Haggard yes. tribute. Uh, tell, tell us about that. How, how special was that? Oh, my gosh. That? It was such a treat. Um, actually, I, I never got to know Merle very well, although I did... I was around him on a couple of occasions and got to honor him with Willie um, at the Kennedy Center Honors, and then I think he passed away shortly after that. So for me, it was just a it was a great thrill to get to get to be on the bill with so many great artists. But it was fun because I mean, it was unusual. There were tons of artists on, it and there wasn't like a big hangout in the backstage. But um, Keith was there, Keith Richards, and that's a big hang. I mean, just by itself, <laughs> yeah. that's a big hangout. And I got to see Willie, who's just been near and dear for years and years and been such a good friend. So my night was May. You actually opened for the Rolling Stones at Vanderbilt University. I did. And you want to hear something even crazier? Yes. I got a phone call in 94. We were in... Uh, we were in... Uh, where's the place that s- sells all the pot? Amsterdam. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm sorry. My brain. Of course, everywhere now, I guess, yeah, sells pot. Right. It's legal. But um, back then, Denver. that was, you know. Um, yeah, it was a little boulder. Um, and I get a call at 4.30 in the morning. It was it was uh, Mick Jagger. And so they invited me in 95 after all I want to do. Because, was it after all I want to do? Yeah. Anyway, this is how long Chris has been with me. They sent a private plane for the two of us to fly over and play with them at Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami. Um, for a pay-per-view and like 65,000 people and we were just like oh my god we've never been on a private plane let's call everybody we know to see if they want to come back with us but um you know they've just been amazing to me for you know 25 years they've invited me to do stuff so i'm i'm 
super blessed. Well, that was like the the la- after the Stones played at Vanderbilt, they're like, okay, I don't think we're doing shows here anymore. That was really oh, uh, well. I think did the power go out for a little bit, like in maybe the oh. surrounding neighborhood may not. Have oh, affected- that's funny. Well, I just remember it must have been in the summer because we went on and it was still daylight, which is such a buzzkill. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah. I still have people walk up to me though and say, well, "I was at that gig when you opened up for the Rolling Stones at Vanderbilt." So it was small. It's. It was uh, small, yeah. It's uh, definitely a special place to get to see a show. I've only seen two concerts. I think only there's only been like two concerts since then. Uh, Dave Matthews Band played there, and uh, also saw U2 there. Oh my goodness! With Florence and the Machine, so that was pretty special. Wow! Ooh, love them. But uh, a great hang today. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. Happy to have you here today. This is uh, a lot of times your entrance music on stage, and today it's your exit music. We are going to be exiting from the One RPM Studio. It's the Stones. Thanks again to Cheryl Crow for hanging at Lightning 100.